I'm back with a very important video on how to stop frying your brain with your cell phone. Now, I've talked about this in other videos, but I wanted to do a series of videos on something called EMF and try to break it down really, really simple. It's going to be a fairly short video, but I'm going to show you what I do to minimize what's called invisible radiation. So EMF, what is it? It stands for electromagnetic field. So what does that mean? Well, you have an electric component to it. You have a magnetic field part of it. And you also have other fields of energy, radio frequencies, and even microwaves. Typically, you think of microwaves being the microwave oven, but there's other things that will give you microwaves, including your cell phone. The problem is it's not regulated by safety codes at this time. So it's kind of like um, at some point in time, people started smoking and smoking was considered actually beneficial for you. You also had DDT, which was considered beneficial. You also had asbestos, which was considered safe. And then you had sugar, which was considered beneficial at one time. And then years later, they find out, oh, we didn't do the safety uh, testing on that long enough. So whoops, sorry. So we're going to put some regulation in. So right now, unfortunately, there's not a lot of um, safety testing going on. Now, let's first talk about the electrical fields. So you have all these little electrons going through a wire that's called the current going through the wire. And the pressure that's pushing this electricity is called the voltage. So it's the pressure from a power source. So the more pressure or more voltage, the more electrical field you're going to have on the wire. And so let's say, for example, you're trying to sleep at night and right next to your bed, you have a light source, you have your alarm clock, you have some other electrical devices. And some people might have the consideration that if they turn the light off, the electrical field goes away. Well, I want to demonstrate that it actually doesn't go away unless you unplug the light at the outlet on your wall. Because even though you turn the light off at this level, if you were to open up this wire, it would be hot or live. In other words, there's voltage in that wire that is generating an electrical field unless you disconnect it at the wall. And so there's different switches that you can get. You can plug it into the wall and then plug your uh, light into there. So you can turn things off at the outlet level so there'll be less electrical current coming from these wires next to your head while you're sleeping. And then you have magnetic fields. So magnetic field occurs anytime there's current flowing through a wire. And so there's a field that's generated uh, sometimes six to eight feet from that source if it's a strong magnetic field. And so magnetic fields only occur if it's live, if there's current flowing through a wire. So let me demonstrate that. So I'm, I'm on electrical fields right here. And take a look at these wires down here, right? These wires are connecting to this light right here. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and turn off the light. Okay. Look at this is still high. The wire is still high because there's voltage in this cord. So we want to turn it off at the outlet or just unplug the light or other devices next to your bed. Okay, for the next demonstration, I'm going to, I'm going to turn it to magnetic fields. In order for something to have a magnetic field, you have to have current flowing through it. So we turn on the light. Okay, so we have the light right through here. You can see that it's pretty high, right? Now, I'm going to turn off the light. Okay, now I'm going to, I'm going to assess the, the same cord, and it's not, not very active, if at all. Why? because the magnetic field only occurs if there's current flowing through the wire. If I turn it to the electrical field, it's high, but not magnetic. So electrical fields have to do with voltage, which is the power that's pushing these little electrons. And magnetic field has to do with the fields that extend beyond the current. It's not the voltage or the power, it's just uh, the electrons going through it. And then we get to something called radio waves, or microwaves. 
And for that topic, you have a router, you might have a cell tower that is sending signals to your cell phone. And so if your phone is close to your head, your brain, you're going to be getting exposure to microwaves. Not to mention maybe some magnetic and electrical fields as well. So let me do a little demonstration with the cell phone to show you. All right, so now we're going to turn this all the way to radio frequencies, okay? And I'm going to get it close to my cell phone right here. You can see it's pulsing, right? Because we have this, this uh, the cell tower is sending signals every so often. Okay, so now I'm going to actually make a call. I'm going to call Jared. So you can, you can see that it's pulsing like this. So all these microwaves are going right to your brain if it's held up close to your skull. Now, in the future, I'm going to do some other videos to show you how to identify other sources of invisible radiation uh, using this tool right here. I like the Trifield EMF meter model TF2. I have other devices. This seems to be very simple. It's very accurate. And um, I'm going to show you what I found with my power cables, my backup on my computer, the actual screen itself, the Wi-Fi devices, um, the printer. And so all these things are bathing your body in these frequencies. And if you're sitting behind the computer, like I do for a very long time, um, it's not healthy. So you're going to have to minimize the exposure and find out where it's coming from. So with this device, you can measure the radio frequencies, the electrical fields, as well as the magnetic fields, very, very simply. And uh, I'll be doing more videos on that. If you're interested in getting one of these, I'll put a link down below and you can check it out. I don't get any kickbacks or anything like that. And so it's a really good device and you can go around your house and just find the sources of uh, where you're being um, affected. Now, getting back to the cell phone, what are you going to do? Well, there's a couple things. First thing is that uh, try to talk with the speaker on so it's not connected to your head. But what I found was this right here. Okay, so now I have these earbuds, which are right here, right? Got it plugged into my phone, and uh, I still have it on radiation. So you can see that they're not really having any effect. Definitely the earbuds are the way to go. So we have earphones and a mic, and it's called anti-radiation air tubes, okay? They're headphones with the mic. EMF protection. You can look these up. I'll put a link down below on Amazon um, on the one that I have. But again, I, I don't get any kickbacks or any commissions, but I just want you guys to know about this. So what's cool about this is that there's just a tube between this source and your ear. So it gives you some space so you don't have a direct electrical wire going into your ear. That's why I don't recommend the Bluetooth devices where you're sticking the ear now the sound pickup is not perfect, but it's doable. So what you would do is you would put these in your ear, and the problem is that this is not gonna connect into your cell phone, okay? So you have to get a, a, an adapter. And so I got an adapter right here, I'll put a link down below, which plugs into this 3.5 millimeter jack. Then I can stick this into my cell phone. So now I can hold the source of the radiation over here and not have it affect my brain. Now, I am doing a lot of Zoom presentations all day long, so what I did is I got an adapter for that too. So this is what it looks like right here. So this has a USB, and then I can plug this right here, plug this in the back of my computer, and now I can actually be on Zoom and interact with people, and so no longer do I have to have those headphones, which actually make your head so tired. And so I found my energy greatly increased after getting uh, these, this adapter and also these earphones. So uh, I highly recommend it if you're on the phone a lot. I would recommend it for your kids if they're on Zoom, doing the homeschool, 
um, especially the younger they are, the more sensitive they're going to be, especially on putting electromagnetic fields into your brain. Not a good thing. So go ahead and try this and comment down below and stay tuned for more information about how to protect yourself against EMFs.